Hello, I'm Jenny Raymond, and today I'm going to show you how to make a pod. I might say, what on earth is a pod? Do I have any need for any pods in my life? Oh, yes, you do. Pod is one of those really useful structures that you can put things in. Now, for instance, here is a pod made with some Tim Holtz fabrics, and I have this one hanging in my downstairs cloakroom for all things like oddments of gloves and bits and bobs like that. Here is another pod made with all the Keeley fabric, and this I keep in the kitchen for plastic bags and stuff like that. A smaller one hangs from my sewing machine table because it's absolutely ideal for putting all those scrappy bits of thread in them. Now, you can, if you want, have them padded, as this one is, or you could have them unpadded. It matters not. But how do you make a pod? Well, all you need is a piece of paper. A4 paper would be absolutely fantastic if you want to make a smallish pod, but I'm going to tell you how to make them any size you like. The way you make the pattern is you take the height of the pod plus half the measurement of the base, which is nine plus half of four is two. So you need an 11 inch piece of paper that is 11 inches top to bottom. You then need to have a piece of paper that is twice the width of the base. So the base is going to be four inches. So I have a piece of paper that is eight inches wide. And your piece of paper is going to look something like this. 11 inches top to bottom and eight inches in width. Should you wish to make a smaller pod, say like this particular one, the height of this one is six inches, its base is three inches, six plus half of three is seven and a half. The width of the piece of paper needs to be twice three, which makes it six inches. So there is the pattern for a smaller pod. The height of the pod plus half the base and the piece of paper is twice the base. Once you've got your piece of paper, we can begin to draw our pattern or construct it rather. Move number one will be to fold the piece of paper in half lengthwise and put a crease right across the middle. Open it out, fold one side to touch the middle and crease again. Turn it to the other side and fold the second side to touch the middle. So I have creased the paper across the centre and across half the centre on either side. Remembering that my base is four inches, I'm going to take a ruler and draw a line two inches away from one side of the paper. So I have positioned my ruler two inches in from one end of the paper, working on the shorter side and draw a line straight across. I'm now going to remove part of the pattern. And the section of pattern I'm going to remove is up this crease, along that line and down the other crease. Now you can choose to do this with scissors or you could do it with your rotary cutter. It really matters not, but you need to take this chunk out. When you've taken that chunk out, you have actually now prepared the base of the pod. To prepare the top of the pod, the angle that goes down here, you simply fold this corner over to make a triangle. Now, if you want it to go down very steeply, fold it over and we're folding it from this crease here. You do not fold it any further than the crease there. So that's your crease. You could fold it over as a total right angle there. When you have done that, the depth of your pod is going to be this distance because that is part of the base. So if you want a deeper pod, then fold this corner at a subtly different angle. And now the depth of your pod is going to be that. If you wish to have a curved edge, there's no reason why you can't curve this side of the pod. And that's all there is to your pattern. Now we're ready to actually start cutting the fabric. Having prepared the pattern, fold your fabric and put the fold, this is the short side of the pod pattern, on the fold of the fabric. Allow at least a quarter of an inch all the way around the pod. Pin the pattern in place and then cut outside the pattern, adding on a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This could be done by using 
one of the cutting rulers, the acrylic rulers, placing the quarter of an inch line down the edge of the template and you're simply cutting outside. If you preferred, there's no reason why you can't draw around your pattern and then remove the pattern and cut outside the drawn line, adding on a quarter of an inch. When you've added on a quarter of an inch right the way around the entire pattern, it should, with luck, resemble something that looks a bit like this one. Here's one I did earlier. Having prepared the outside of your pod, then you need to prepare the lining. And the easiest way to prepare the lining is to take this, keeping it folded, lay it onto your lining fabric and literally cut round the shape, cutting a piece of lining exactly the same size. Once you've got your lining and your pod out of fabric, take the out of fabric and it needs to be placed onto some form of wadding. Now, whether or not you choose to put it onto wadding is up to you. But if you are going to use wadding and you've only got bits of wadding, why not join the wadding together using a wide zigzag on the sewing machine? Make sure you've got enough wadding that will actually fit the pod pattern. Lay it onto the wadding, pin it in place, then using a long stitch, so right the way around the very edge of the entire thing, and keep that stitching very, very close to the raw edge. When you've done that, cut off all the excess wadding right back to the outside edge of the pod material. This, of course, is going to arise in a whole load of odd bits of wadding. And what can you do with those? What you could do with your wadding is make up a bag like this. Now, this literally is taking the bits of wadding, wrapping fabric around it and building it up. It's a soft sculpture. You could, if you liked, actually make something like this little bow. There is a little bow, again, made by just literally using all the strips of wadding up and making a little bow. It does, if you want, make into a hat. Just think you could be going down the shops wearing one of those, maybe not. This particular idea comes from a book that I wrote called Fans and Fabrications, this particular book. And you can find that on my website, www.jennyraymond.com, but more about that a little later. Anyway, let's return to our pod. To sew the pod together, fold it right sides on the inside, and you're going to sew all the way down the long edge using quarter of an inch seam allowance. So stitch right the way down the long edge. As you can see, I'm sewing down the long side quarter of an inch seam allowance. When you get to the bottom, it's a really good idea to use a small scrap of fabric. I call it a donkey. And so off the main piece of work onto the small scrap. Cut the threads by cutting behind the presser foot. Right, I've now stitched down the long edge. I need to take the bottom of the pod, open it out and bring opposite sides together. So I'm going to line up this side with that side. It leaves two little corners cut out there. Easiest way to sew this is sew it from this side and it'd be quite nice if you keep that center seam open and flat. So I'm going to sew off my little scrap, across the pod, make sure I don't get it caught up in there. And when I get to the other side, I'm just going to retrieve it from this end and have it ready to pop on back again here. Go on here. Right, so I've now stitched across the bottom of the base of the pod. On these cutaway sections, I'm going to open them out and bring the two raw edges together. And again, sew straight across that. And then you have a decision to make as to whether you want it to have a tab or not. Let's sew straight across that one. Rescue my little thread saver, donkey, leaders, enders, call it what you will. I think a donkey is a nice name for it. It's carrying the thread from one piece of work to another. And let's do the same thing on this corner. So you're going to close both of those two cutaway edges and stitch across. And then we need to talk about the tab. So jump onto that, sew across there. 
tree for a little donkey. So back on this side. So my pod is now made apart from the possible tab. Now, when it comes to making a tab, you could have used the small section you cut out from the leg, or maybe you want to have a slightly bigger tab. If you are going to make a tab, I take a piece of fabric, say about one and a quarter inches deep, about three centimeters, and about four and a half inches, 11 centimeters long. And I fold sides to middle, and then in half again, and so as close as I can do to either side of the tab, resembling something like this. The tab needs to be then stitched to the outside of the pod, and you want to put it on the back, in the center of the back seam, and I tend to put the raw edges or the folded edges together and have it like that, going downwards into the pod. If you can keep that back seam open and flat, that would be great. There's my little tab underneath the presser foot, and I would just stitch it on with a couple of stitches backwards and forwards, just to hold it in place. And keep your stitching inside the seam allowance. Now we have to prepare the lining. And the lining gets prepared in exactly the same way. There is a butt though. And just let me show you what the butt is. It's something you don't sew. In so far as the lining goes, the butt that I've just mentioned is you do all the stitching exactly the same. You sew down the long side, you sew across the face, you sew one of those corners up and you leave one of these right angled corners open because that is the way that we're going to be able to turn our pod right side out when we come to it. So I have the outside of my pod with its tab, I have the lining. All I'm going to do now is to turn the lining right side out and drop the lining into the pod. Now, what I like to do, because the lining wants to be inside the pod and it has to be slightly smaller, is when I set it within the pod exterior, I will leave a small amount of the lining showing around the edge. I like to line up the seam at the back. So line up your back seams there. Put a pin in it, just extending the lining fractionally because the lining's got to go inside the bag. And I'll line up the front, thread out the way, so line up the V at the front, again, with just a tiny bit of extra lining sticking out there. It just makes life, I think, a little bit better. It makes it fit in there much more easily. When you've pinned it at the front and at the back, just fit it round the sides. And as you can see, I'm just allowing a small amount of lining. Once you've got the lining in situ, all you need to now do is to sew right the way around the entire top of the pod, round the entire thing, keeping your usual quarter of an inch seam allowance, or indeed whatever seam allowance you have actually decided upon. So round the top of the pod, right the way around the entire thing. So as you can see, I've sewn all the way around the top edge of the pod. Before you come to turn it through, it will pay you to clip, nick into the seam here at the base of the V, and also put a few clips up the edge here, just so that it lies, the lining lies neatly inside. When you come to the clipping, don't cut through the seam. It's very easy to do if you're slightly over zealous with your clipping. So clip there. Once you've done some clipping, and do make sure you've clipped it in there, else it just doesn't turn through properly, find the little hole in the lining and we are going to turn our pod right side out. So push it all through the hole in the lining, pop your hand inside it just to poke the thing completely out, form the base, there's our nice neat little base there, there's my lining. Now what I like to do at this stage is I find it's quite a good idea to press it and so you can really can get those fabrics nice and flat. When I press it along here, that's when I'll tuck the lining into the pod and I'm going to top stitch round the outside edge. So I will give it a press nice and flat there, then tuck the lining right inside and give it another jolly good press before actually top stitching round the outside edge. So that's it. I've now sewn round the top of the pod. There's one last task to do. 
and that is to sew up the hole in the lining. So either by hand or on the machine, bring the raw edges together and either slip stitch by hand or sew on the machine with a small straight stitch, tuck the lining back inside. That is the pod complete and it can now join my family of other pods, the smaller one I have here and the little tiny little one I have there. Now consider it, it's a really nice idea for a small present for somebody, maybe birthday present, Christmas present, gift for a hostess, you could pop some nice little bits and pieces inside it. It's a very useful bit of kit. Now if you've enjoyed watching this video, please click subscribe, it's totally free, and if you do click subscribe, it will tell you at some point in time about the other videos I should be making. If you'd like to know more about me, then go to www.jennyraymond.com and that will tell you about the lectures, the classes, and about the books and patterns that I write. So thank you all for watching. I trust you've enjoyed a little pod making.